everybody, I'm Joanne on Joanne Tech Lover, and today I'll be going over the Corsair Raptor K40 gaming keyboard. And when I see Raptor, I think about the little Raptor hatchling and the Wild Quest. You're like a little hatchling and you kind of run around being all stealth and stuff. So my little story for the day. <laughs> um, and basically you try to talk to the elder Raptors to get skills and then kind of get around the trolls in the area. And it was, uh, took some patience on my part, but I passed it. Here's everything that comes in the box. You get the keyboard itself, of course, but I'll talk about that in just a little bit. First up, let's take a look at the uh, documentation. So what do you have? You have the Corsair Raptor series. Um, this is the quick start guide. And what I like about this is you actually do get a guide to uh, the software, which can be very useful. I don't think every quick start guide has that. I am not sure why. It's like, you should just know how to use the software. Well, maybe I do because I've used a lot, but still it's like, Alrighty, uh, what do you also get? You get a warranty against defects and another warranty guide. Good stuff. This is the uh, cable, the USB cable. It is a smooth rubberized, which is not something I'm into, but for the price, you know, it's okay. Also, I believe USB 2.0 connector. And this keyboard does have full key rollover on via USB, which means that press any number of keys at the same time, it should register the keystroke. I did try it and it, it at least registers eight. I didn't, you really don't need more than that to be honest, but uh, let's take a look at the um, keys and whatnot. So I wanna talk a little bit about rubber dome switches. So yes, I know some of you might be like cringe, but it is still the most popular um, you know, key switch on the market right now. And it is still relatively inexpensive and it is spill resistant. This is like in comparison to the cherry switches anyway, the inexpensive part. And it is very quiet. So for those of you, cause I know there are cherry users who do use the O-ring to um, make the uh, cherry switches even softer in sound. So not all of us prefer that really clickety clackety sound. Um, but you do need to press the key all the way down to actuate it. So you might experience some fatigue, but I would say you would get that with the Cherry MX Blacks um, as well as the greens because of the uh, resistance. Now, let me go ahead and remove a keycap so you can go ahead and take a look. So I don't have the wire key puller yet. I don't know why. It's like it just never delivered, but here's a look at the uh, rubber dome. And so basically what this is, is uh, to press a key, you need to push the rubber switch um, through the hole in the middle of the membrane so that it connects the top and bottom membrane layers, which creates an electrical circuit that causes the keyboard to send the input to your PC. For those of you who didn't already know that, I thought I'd share that little piece of information with you guys, but there you have it. Before I go ahead and light this up for you, I do want to go over some of the uh, buttons and features so that you can see it because normally we would turn off one of the uh, studio lights to show you the lighting. Alrighty, so for this keyboard, it's mainly made of plastic actually with some uh, areas painted differently and you know, that's fine and all because it's what, $79.99. So for a gaming keyboard, it's not bad, especially since you get these six dedicated G keys that you can set macros to. Wish it was fully programmable, but you know what I mean? Uh, it's just gonna cost more. It's really just comes down to that. What I do like about it is that the WASD keys and the navigational pad or keys are of a different color. So silver kind of like up here and then the rest is black, which is nice. And I think Corsair does that for several of their keyboards. And I feel like uh, other manufacturers should do that as well. However, if you're not a gamer, I don't know if you technically need these keys. So it would have been nice if they provided like a black set. So standard QWERTY layout with full number pad. And because of the G keys and you know, full size, this will be larger than some keyboards out there. I think it might be bigger than the K70 because of this line of keys here. But moving right along, you'll see most of the keys slope inwards and then out. But the keys on the bottom here, the control all the way to the you know other control keys, they are sloped outward. Now this is really to just increase your comfort level because when you press the key, you just have to press the edge of it, not like the entire key. Now onto the uh, top edge here, like the uh, Corsair K70, 
the volume bar is up here and you've got these like uh, outward sloping buttons for the mute and uh, volume up and down. The K70 does have a metal wheel though, but you know, it's a lot more expensive. Now down here, you get the multimedia keys. And uh, something I've noticed is that uh, it's just harder to access because they're kind of like hidden behind these keys here simply because, um, you know, they're not high enough, but I guess uh, if you really need to access them, it's not that big of a deal. Now over here are your LED indicators for caps lock, scroll lock, all that good stuff. The different LED settings, you just keep pressing this button until you get to the LED brightness that you want. Now over here, you have a Windows lock key. This is always useful, especially when you're in game, you don't want to accidentally hit your Windows key. Now next to that, we have the MR button, which is macro record. I believe you can record on the fly, but I think the software does need to be open. So what you do is you just press this button until it starts uh, flashing, set the key that you want, which is one of these G keys, and then type in your macro, uh, believe and then you press this again to make it stop blinking. Um, and next to that you have your M1, 2, and 3. So this keyboard has 36 kilobytes of memory on board and basically you can use one profile and it'll store it on here. However, each profile has three key maps. So essentially it's three profiles, which is really awesome. Just simply, you know, cycle through these to get to the key map of your choice. And I believe that covers it for the front. Let's switch it over to the back of the keyboard. So on the back, you do get some rubberized feet, four of them, to help this keyboard stay in place when you are in intense game mode. Also has angled feet, although I don't really use this because it doesn't, uh, it's kind of productive or uh, just doesn't feel good when I have my wrist rest also. But there you have it. Alrighty, here's a look at the LEDs. So we're gonna go ahead, right now it's off obviously, so press this button here. This is level one, two, and three. It's actually not so bad when in a completely, uh, not completely, but semi-dim room. Because in my room, it was a little harder to see. Um, now, let's go ahead and go over to this side for where the uh, key map buttons are right now. We're on M3. And I wanted to show you the different uh, lighting effects. So this is static green. Now, let's go to M2. This is pulsating red. I think it's red. It's kind of orange on screen, but I think it's red, yeah. So there's the pulsating effect. And last but not least, we have the cycling effect. So I decided to start with uh, JTL colors, Joe and Tech Lover. And we're gonna watch it fade to, I believe, uh, more purplish and then blue and then orange green. Okay, let's just take a close look at it. Here's a quick look at the Corsair K40 software, and we're gonna go ahead and assign keys. So obviously, only the G1 to G6 keys. I've already assigned some stuff for G3 to G4. For example, G4 is hello. We're gonna go ahead and open up uh, this uh, document here, and then click G4. Hello, ha! I always do that as a test. It's easy, it's kinda cute. And anyway, so I'm going to show you how to quickly record. You can press the buttons on your keyboard, or you can press these keys here. So we're gonna go ahead and do macro record. There we go. And then click G1. You can name it in this section and then basically just type. Let's see, uh, there you go. And then you just hit this to stop. Oh, and this is G1, right? So we're gonna do Cordy, yay! I also like doing that one. <laughs> Alrighty, um, and obviously if you want to record uh, delays, you can go ahead and record it here. Delay options, you could change your uh, milliseconds, or you can ignore delays, or do random delay, delay time. I'm not really sure what exactly this is, but um, I kind of prefer the, I believe the Razer Tartarus has this, but you can, you could delay in real time. So instead of having to figure out exactly how many milliseconds to delay it, it's kind of nice. So there's also advanced options. You could uh, give these keys, for example, copy paste, keystroke, or advance, like uh, close window, launch a program, run. So just a lot of options for you. So macros in addition to other commands. Now, this is for M1. All I have to do is go to M2 and then do the same thing, M3, 
same thing. Now let's go to, uh, so this is assigned keys. Oh, look, you could also change the level of brightness here. Oh, okay, there's manage profiles. So in order to create a new profile, you just click new and we're going to just double click to rename it. We're gonna rename it what? Uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, and then you just hit enter and then it is saved. And then just go into the assign keys to assign whichever key map and keys that you would like. Now, make sure to save to the K40. I believe every change that you make, so we're gonna go ahead and save. Save, la 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 la. So now the K40 will be using this uh, profile. But if you wanna go back to Joanne's K40, save to K40 and we are good. Alrighty, now there's also a hardware playback if you'd like, but if you click hardware playback, when you go into the backlighting, it'll lock the light effects. Um, but now that we are in the backlight options, I want to show you how you can change it. So for example, you could change the red to this much and you could just look in this area of exactly what has changed. And then we're going to move the blue. Oh, got this very faint purple. Or there are preset colors. I just use these because I'm like, they have the cycle effect. So it'll go through all the colors anyway. So there's white. And uh, there's green, blue, blue. Are they both blue? Okay, uh, orange, a lighter orange, uh, Joanne Tech Lover color, ha ha ha. And then a yellow. And what else? So you could do static, true color, max brightness. There's the indicator here as well. That changes your brightness. Or we could go to uh, light effects if you don't like static. You want to do, oh, on idle or pulse and uh, cycle, which is cycle through the different colors, but pulse will just, you know, fade in, in and out. Now for here, I believe this is the speed meter. I believe anyway, um, I, I may be wrong, but there you have it. Oh, you could also, you know, type in, oh no, I guess you can't, but uh, there you have it. That's how you use it. And hopefully you found this uh, useful and we'll go ahead and use it if you have this keyboard. It's time for pros and cons. So what do I like about it is first of all, the price because it's still relatively inexpensive and compared to, you know, mechanical switches, that is. Um, however, if this is around your price range and you are a gamer, this might be what you're looking for. So I didn't do a sound test earlier, but let's uh, go for it. That's kind of what the rubber dome switches sound like, but let's do spider fingers. Yay! Okay, so that's what it sounds like. And I would say for those of you who prefer a quiet keyboard, this, is, this isn't so bad to be honest. I mean, like I know some of you go, I hate rubber domes, whatever. But honestly, they're, they do the job, you know, and you do feel a bump. It's quiet. It's just, you know, the life cycle isn't as long. It's five, mil uh, five million versus like 50 million for the Cherry series and stuff like that. Alrighty, uh, what else do I like about it is that I do like the colors. See, the W, A, S, D, and the move keys are, um, I mean, all the navigational keys are the same color as the, this top piece here. And what I'd like to see actually more metal because most of this is plastic, but you kind of get what you pay for. And honestly, it's not that big of a deal for those of you because I mainly just touch the keys. I don't go and go, ooh, nice top of the keyboard. Well, maybe. <laughs> um, and also do like um, that uh, the lighting, of course. The major plus is the lighting, the RGB back lighting. What I've liked for perky illumination might, might have been brighter, but uh, you just have to wait for that keyboard to come out, right? <laughs> um, however, as to the lighting, would have liked if it could have been, like I said, brighter. Because, you know, unless I'm in a completely dark room or, you know, dark corner of the room, I won't be able to see the lighting as well. Like compared to the K70s, because that is per key illumination, it is like, just, just, it's just night and day. But like I said, this keyboard for the price, it's really not bad. And you get G keys. So you get dedicated macro keys, something that the K70 doesn't even have. So, you know, if you need that programmable setup, it's great. However, for a while, because I am a wow head, <laughs> yeah. Um, I probably won't reach these keys if my hands are constantly on the move keys. So what I would do is maybe just put buff um, you know, macros on these keys and just be done with it. Uh, but uh, I believe that covers it. Oh yes, and of course I do like the unlimited number of profiles, three key maps per profile, and you can set different lines to each profile, I mean each key map. So that is pretty cool.
That wraps it up for this video on the Corsair Raptor K40 gaming keyboard. So if you like what you saw and you want to see more, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, like, and comment because I love hearing what you have to say. I learn something, you learn something, you know, all that good stuff. Just keep the cycle of learning going. <laughs> Alrighty, um, and also follow me on social media, please, if you would like, such as uh, Joanne Tech Lover, Facebook fan page, Twitter's uh, Joanne Food Lover, and twitch.tv slash where I game, uh, game stream with Tim on a weekly basis. Also, don't forget to donate as it'll help expand this channel as well as feed this techie. Alrighty, I guess uh, that's it, right? So, mwah, love you much.